I must have been 13 years old when I was reading a bedtime story to my little brother Ben, eight years my junior, when he said, that's not how the story goes. My brother had heard this story so many times. He precisely knew the words, the order, and the tone of voice this story was to be read in. What seemed so obvious to him was a struggle for me. I can read, but reading out loud, it still makes me break out in a sweat. Here's the thing, what I see and what's written on the page are simply two different things. When I was 10 years old, I moved across the country. In my new class, there were 40 people, 40 kids. Imagine that, double the size of my old class. The auditory overdrive of 40 kids yelling, laughing, and playing. I just could not concentrate. There was too much going on. My teacher saw that I needed more attention. So that's how I ended up, just in front of the teacher's desk, despite being the tallest kid in the class. My entire childhood, I've been clumsy, tripped over my own two feet, was forbidden from setting the table as I've dropped too many plates, and reading out loud, that was beyond painful. My parents felt something was off, so they decided to get me tested. I wasn't stupid or slow. I was diagnosed to have dyslexia. My brain just works differently from yours. Even today, I can still be totally convinced that I see a six when in fact it is a nine. And in all fairness, that is a bit of an inconvenience if you work with numbers all day. <laughs> As a little girl, I loved stories. Every couple of weeks, I would go to the library and pick out a new selection of books. I would stack them up so high, you could barely see my boyish glasses and hat full of curls. The words may not have been written on the page, but the stories I created in my head, they were magical. My parents decided to send me off to remedial teaching school, a tailored program to provide me with the tools to navigate my future. As the school was far away from where I lived, I boarded with a nice family. In my new school, there was no hierarchy. Everybody was equal. We were even taught in a circle. And for the first time in my life, I loved going to school. I was surrounded by other kids, and we were all on our own learning journey. Here in my new school, the teachers were encouraging, positive, and instilling that having a learning challenge is not a curse, but in fact, a superpower. I started growing confidence in math, in reading, and with this newfound confidence and everything that I learned, I started secondary school. With the help of many tutoring classes, I managed to stay afloat in the mainstream education system. I proceeded with my bachelor's degree. I had an international career that brought me to Dubai and now to Singapore. I chose to embrace my dyslexia. I was determined that I could succeed in my own way, at my own pace. The beauty of having dyslexia is the sheer fact that a brain that works differently comes up with a different solution, and that is a valuable gift. Nearly 30 years later, I find myself in the same room reading where I was reading to my little brother, Ben. This time, I'm reading to my mother. It is an epic story where each, each sentence runs over five lines, at least. My mom still hears when I miss the order of the words. By the briefest of pauses, yet she says nothing. Just a faint smile around her mouth while she listens to my voice and to a story that may or may not have been written. Thank you. <laughs> 